guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to update you guys on my whole sleep training situation. If you watched my last video, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm sorry it was so long. <laughs> and it's actually been a week since I filmed that video. So I filmed that on the 10th. Today is actually the 18th and Jack is seven months old today. Wow. Um, but I'm so late up, um, I'm so late updating you guys on this because, well, I only really uploaded that video, like, yesterday. Anyways, um, I ended up getting sick, like, really sick. So that day that I filmed, that night, I was up all night throwing my guts up. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure I had food poisoning. It could have been the stomach flu. I'm not 100% sure because they are so similar, but... I feel like it was food poisoning because it was after I ate my dinner that night that my stomach started to get ups upset and queasy and gurgly and I knew something wasn't right so I went to bed at like 9 and I was up 10 o'clock throwing up so um, yeah I, it was rough it was real rough um, but anyways um, so I sleep trained Jack using the cry out method. I only done it with his naps. I didn't do it with his nighttime. Um, and as I expected, his night sleeping has improved since sleep training him for his naps. That makes sense. Usually if you just work on one of it, the other one will resolve itself. Um, whether that's if you sleep train for nighttime or sleep train for daytime. Um, I picked naps because nighttimes were pretty easy for me. It was just the daytime. So prior to sleep training, Jack um, fighted his naps a lot. Like he did not want to take his naps. Um, so his first nap in the morning, he would take no problem, and it wasn't hard to get him down for that one either, and he usually slept an hour and a half. And the rest of the day, I pretty much spent holding him, trying to get him to sleep. Um, and that was the vicious cycle of breastfeeding him to sleep, and then trying to put him down, and when I, every time I did put him down, he would wake crying, and I'd have to do the whole thing over again. So I was tired, I was exhausted, I was overwhelmed, I was frustrated, he was tired, and, um, well, overtired, and exhausted as well, so we just weren't in a good place, and I was so ready for sleep training. Um, so I want to talk to you about how... Um, our experience went. Um, so with the cried out method, you put your baby down when your baby uh, shows sleepy signs, rubbing their eyes, yawning, getting cranky, um, staring off into space, and you put them in the crib or wherever they sleep and you leave them be for an hour and if they're still crying after an hour, you go in, pick them up, and pre just pretend that nap time is over. Well, it just got really bright. The sun is on the side of the house, so I'm really sorry about that. Wow. I'm sure it won't last long. The sun's gonna go away again here in a second. I hope. Anyways, let's just go with it. <laughs> Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so you leave them for an hour and if they're not sleeping and still crying at the end of an hour, you go pick them up, pretend nap time is over and uh, keep them up for at least half an hour and then when they show that they're tired again, put them down again and try it again. Um, nighttime for extinction, you put them down at bedtime and you don't go in anymore until the next morning. Again, I didn't sleep train for nighttime. Like, wow, that's so bright. <laughs> Ouch. Okay. Um, I didn't sleep train nighttime, so I only done daytime nap time. So night times, I still went in and fed him. I didn't leave him be. Like, that is crazy. I'm so sorry about the lighting. Anyway, so, um, so let me tell you how our uh, days went. So the first day I already told you in the last video but I'll go over it again. So he woke 7 o'clock. I put him down at 9. He did not sleep that whole hour. So after an hour he was still awake. He didn't cry for that full 
hour like he would cry he would um, whine and um, um, mumble I guess and he would settle and then he would cry and he was kind of it wasn't straight crying and um, yeah he just didn't sleep so at 10 o'clock I went in and picked him up and um, I played with him for a little bit and he, I waited until he showed me that he, um, sleepy signs again which wasn't till 11.30. So I put him down then and he fell asleep right away. There was no crying, there was no uh, fighting it, he just fell right asleep. So he slept for an hour and a half, that first nap. Around 3.30, um, around three o'clock, he was starting to show sleeping signs again and I, I didn't think he was gonna nap anymore but I did put him down. Um, he was there for about half an hour, 40 minutes, and he didn't nap, so I went and got him, and I, I started rocking him, and, um, I was, he was really cuddly, and I was really enjoying the cuddles, so I, I rocked him a little bit, and he ended up falling asleep, and I let him fall asleep, so he did have a second nap for an hour, um, and then he didn't go to sleep that night until quarter after eight, because he had such a late nap, and Barn rocked him to sleep. He woke at 11 and 4.45 that night. Um, the second day is when I was sick with food poisoning. So I was in bed all day. I could barely sit up. I was so sick. Um, and luckily that day Jack was so good. I swear he must have known. And even Tucker was good that day. Um, they were both being very nice to me. Jack most of the day spent it in his bouncer and oh, God love him. God love him <laughs> because I couldn't even get out of bed. I was so sick. Um, but anyway, so the second day he woke at 7.30. I put him down at 9.45. He cried for 45 minutes and uh, slept from 10.30 to 11.45. So like an hour and 15 minutes. Um, his second nap, I put him down at 2.20, um, and I put him in a swing because I was so sick, um, and I really wanted him to have a second nap instead of, because I knew if he didn't nap, he would have been fussy the rest of the day, and I was just so sick that I really wanted him to nap, so I put him in a swing, and lately he's been really liking his swing, so I took advantage of that. <laughs> um, so I, I wouldn't recommend that any other time if I wasn't if I wasn't sick I wouldn't have done that but because I was so sick I did um, so he slept from 2:27, so it only took him seven minutes to fall asleep until 3:30. so he's 3 34 o'clock so he had an hour hour and a half nap um, and then he went to bed at 7 and bar racked him to sleep he woke at 8 9 30 and 2 20 um, so that was the second day. The third day he woke at 7.30. 9.30 I put him down. Um, he only fussed for 10 minutes and at 9.40 to 11.20 he had his first nap so that was about an hour and a half. Um, 2 o'clock I put him down for his second nap and then 10 after 2 he was asleep. No tears so it only took him again 10 minutes. And 7.50 I put him down for um, nighttime, and this is the first night I um, left him to see if he would go to sleep on his own, and he did. He fussed for 20 minutes and fell asleep on his own. He woke that night at 9:50, 11, 12, and 2 o'clock. Then the fourth day, he woke at 7. Um, his first nap was from 9:30 to 11:50, and he went to sleep no tears. Um, he went right to sleep on his own. Three o'clock, I put him down. Um, and this has happened a couple times. Um, I'll put him down for, his, and it's usually his second nap. I'll put him down, and I'll watch him on the monitor, and it'll look like he's trying to get comfortable and trying to go to sleep, but he squirms a little bit. He'll settle, and then he'll squirm around, and then he'll settle. And he did that for like 15 minutes, and then he started fussing. Um, so I went up and he had a poop done. So that's happened a couple times now um, where he'll try and he'll try and put himself to sleep but I guess he, he ends up pooping and then he's... So I'll go in, I'll just pick him up, rock him and I'll sing him a song and then I'll put him down and, and change him and he will go right to sleep, no tears. 
Um, so the second net was to from 3.20 to 4.30. Um, again, no tears. I went to sleep at 7.30. So, um, a little recap. So the first day, he cried for one hour and did not sleep for that first nap. And uh, when he did, when I went, when I put him down the second time, an hour and a half later, he slept for an hour and a half, and then no tears. The second day, he cried 45 minutes and slept an hour and 15 minutes. The third day, he cried 10 minutes, slept an hour and a half, and then the fourth day, no tears, slept an hour and a half. So it went from one hour to 45 minutes to 10 minutes to no tears. So I guess it took. There was two bad days where it was hour and then 45 minutes and then 10 minutes is not bad and then no tears on the fourth day. And to me, it's so worth it. I mean, yes, the first day he cried that full one hour, but prior to sleep training, he cried in my arms for one to two hours. So really, like, what's the difference between crying in my arms and in his crib? when the just in a couple of days he's sleeping on his own and taking two naps a day like I'm so happy that I done it and I just feel so much better and I, I've noticed a difference in him as well that he feels so much better so um, I am very happy that I sleep trained um, and that I done the cry night method because if I stuck to the like you know checking on him every so every so many minutes um, it just it didn't work for him and then it takes so much longer so I feel like that in the long run is more tears than the cry night method if that makes sense um, so I'm gonna put all that that I just um, wrote out I think I'm gonna put it in the description um, especially like the like the first day second day and how long he cried and whatever so you can look at it there um, but yeah, like today he, um, his first, he took two naps, he's taking a second nap right now, and there was no tears whatsoever. He doesn't fall asleep right away, like I'll put him in his crib and he'll run and I'll roll around a little bit and look at his little, um, what do you call that thing? Mobile thing. <laughs> and he'll eventually fall asleep. He might complain a little bit where he'll, he won't cry, but he might fuss a little bit but he'll he will go to sleep in like 10 minutes nighttime now he's only waking once a night so the last few nights I think he's woken once around I want to say three three four o'clock and then he wakes at around seven seven thirty um and it's been great I feel a lot better he feels a lot better we're sleeping more and we're just all around a lot better <laughs> So if you are thinking about sleep training, I highly suggest it. Um, but you don't have to do the cry it out. You do what you feel is right for you. That might be cry it out or it might be that easy, um, gentler sleep training. Um, but definitely read books or read Google it or read like um, other mom's stories about how they done it. Um, but yeah, if your baby's not sleeping, I definitely think you should sleep train because there is a light at the end of the tunnel and I, I promise it won't last long. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!